Hello guys, Tap HD here and welcome back to another video and today we will be installing an SSD into this, my 2012 Mac Mini. This is the good upgradable Mac Mini before they neutered things for 2014. Right now this has got its original one terabyte hard drive in it and today we'll be replacing it with this crucial SSD. Now why did I go for this SSD? Well I've used crucial drives before and had no problems with them and also this was quite cheap on Amazon. It was only £26 and I thought this would be the one I would get because it had quite good reviews. Now at the start I will say this is not a tutorial. You may be able to follow this video and put an SSD in your Mac Mini, however this is not a tutorial and I won't really be guiding you through it too much. This video is just to document the process of me doing it. I've got three different screwdrivers here. I'm not sure if I'll need these. These are Torx screwdrivers. I've got a T9, a T8 and the T6. I believe I will need these. I might need more. I'm not too sure. I'm not following a particular guide for doing this. I've seen some guides, they all say to do it slightly different ways, so I'm just going to be doing this by myself and not following a guide. Of course the first thing we're going to have to do is take the base off. Of course this is one of the easy to remove bases, just slide it and we should be able to take it out just like that. And here is the inside of the Mac Mini. If you didn't know, you can technically put two drives in here. By default the standard Mac Minis only come with one drive and it's under here and if you've got the server one you can put two under there straight away but if you've got just a normal Mac Mini like this you need to get a special adapter which lets you plug another drive in. We're just going to put one drive in for today but in the future if I want to add a second one we can do that with a £20 adapter which I think is pretty cool. Now I'm not going to stop recording at any point during this video. I might cut some bits out of the final edit. I'm going to keep recording the entire time to make sure I don't miss out any steps in the video. So with all that being said I think we can start this off now. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is use my Torx T9 screwdriver and we're going to undo the two screws on the wireless bracket. I think there's only two that need to be removed. This isn't actually a Torx screw, however the Torx T9 does fit into it. I will put these ones to the side. I'll make sure not to mix up all these different screws, although as they are all different it shouldn't be too hard to work them out. Turns out you need to remove these front two as well from the tray. Good job this isn't a tutorial because I'm not doing a very good job. Those are very tight screws but are coming out nicely. These are different to the ones that go at the side so I'll lay them out up here as they are inside the machine. Those are now out and this whole unit is now loose. Now I'm not going to go ahead and remove that straight away. I'm going to take the fan out. I'm not going to bother unplugging it. There's no real point. I don't want to risk damaging the connector. So two screws there and you can also remove the one down there too. For this the screws are smaller so I'm guessing I will need my T6 and yep that is indeed what I need. I've just moved the fan off to the side. I don't want to risk breaking the connector by unplugging it, so I will leave that connected for now. The next thing we need to do is remove this plastic shroud in here. There's just one screw at the bottom. This is a T6, just like the ones on the fan, so I will unscrew that. Should just come out. Don't want to drop that screw taken that out and this should just slide out. You can't just pull it, it's got to kind of come around to the side I believe. There we go, it just moves around to the side and it just lifts straight out. There's some dust under here so before I put it all back together 
I will just give it a bit of a clean with some compressed air, but we can worry about that later. Make sure to put all the screws together. Okay, so now we've done that, I should be able to lift out this metal bit which has the wireless antennas on it. I don't want to break this. There we go, I just slid it forward a bit. Apologies, this is quite hard to see and that just lifts up. There is a cable connecting this, so do be careful. I'm just going to rest it off to the side and I know this isn't the easiest thing to see, but I don't want to risk breaking these connectors by unplugging them. And now in there is the drive. I thought I would try out this little bit of a higher angle just to see if this makes it a bit easier. Now what we need to do is just remove the hard drive. It's connected to the board with this little connector here. We are of course going to have to remove that. Ideally something like a spudger would be used here but using my nail did just fine. And now there is nothing holding the drive in so theoretically we should just be able to remove this. It needs to come out on an angle and this fan is getting in the way, but that's not a problem because out comes this drive. There we go. Here it is. This is a HGST drive. Looking at it, here there is not an Apple sticker on it, so maybe this isn't an original drive. It says July 13 on there. This is a 2012 Mac Mini. They were still making them in 2013, so who knows? Now, there is some things we need to do with this drive to get it ready to put the new SSD in. I've just moved the Mac Mini out of the way and here is the drive. It's quite dusty, but that is to be expected. This is quite an old machine now, so we need to remove these two Torx bits on the side. These are used to guide the drive into where it goes, so we will need those for the new drive. I'm guessing these are Torx T8, so when we put the new drive in, these need to go on the left if we look at it like that with the connectors on the top. So these seem to be in quite tightly. There we go, one of them is out. There is some thread locker on there. And now I've taken those out. The plastic on here should come off if we need it to, which I don't think we do actually. We probably don't need that for the new drive. Something we do need for the new drive is the SATA connector, which is just attached to the end of the drive. That should just pull off, but there is some tape over the connector there, so I'm guessing we need to peel that off in order to get it out. Tape peeled back, we should now, yep, take the SATA connector off, and now we can forget about this all drive so I will just move it away and now I think we should introduce the new one. Here it is in its box, I'll just take it out. I've not taken this out yet so hopefully it does work. Crucial SSD, the memory and storage experts. We won't need this guide, it's pretty straightforward. Here is the drive, not too exciting but this will do the job just Fine, so as I said, we need to add this connector back onto the end. I'll just give it a bit of a clean, it's not too bad, and it can just attach onto the top. It goes on just like that. And this shows me which way up the drive goes. It goes like that inside the Mac Mini. So these two screws need to go in this side of the drive. And just like that, this new drive is prepped, ready to go back inside the Mac Mini. Now, before I do put this in, I'm just going to get some compressed air and blow some of the dust out from inside here. There we go, I've just used a bit of compressed air on here. It's not perfect, but it will do now. Because this is an older computer and one off eBay, it's probably worth changing the thermal paste at some point. We're not going to do that today, but if I'm having some thermal problems, I will do that in the future. Now this is the difficult part, getting the drive back in. Some people recommend 
using a sort of business card to help guide the drive-in, but I'm just going to try and do it free just to see how it goes. All right, so after a lot of wiggling to try and get it in there, I couldn't get it to sit flush. But in a video I saw about someone installing an SSD in one of those things, I'll link it below, he recommended sticking some tape to the top, preferably masking tape, but I couldn't find any, so this will have to do. This gives you a bit of a handle to help guide it in, so hopefully I will now be able to get it in using this tape. And just like that, I got it lined up first time. I can click the connector down. There we go, the connector is pressed in and I can remove the tape. Hopefully it won't leave any residue, but if it does, it doesn't really matter. This is only the inside of the computer. But there we go, looks like that has come off just fine. So now the next step will be to put the grill with the antenna back down. Be careful about the cable, try not to get it trapped, but it should just slide back into place. Just like that, it is sliding in and it's now pretty much in place. Okay, I've got that plate back on, that actually caused some difficulty. There's also a very helpful video on how to get this in which I will link in the description because it would only go in at one side not the other. You've got to kind of lift the back up while pushing in one side but it's now gone together very nicely. So now we can start to put the screws back in. These two screws at the front I kept separately so they can go back in. Now these two screws actually attach to the new drive that we've put in there to stop it wobbling around, which is quite nice because I did notice that it was a bit loose before putting the cover on, so I should now just be able to put these screws in. Those two screws are now in and the drive is nice and secure. Two more screws to put this plate completely in now. One on the left, it doesn't go in too far. And of course one on the right. Now the next step is to put this black plate in. I'll just get rid of a bit of the dust off here and now we should be able to slide it back in. I'll move the fan out of the way again and it does go in on a diagonal as I said when we were taking it out. Just like that it has clicked back in and I can put that one black screw back in the hole down here. That screw is now back in and finally the fan can go in and then we should be done. The fan is lined up just like that and with my T6 Torx bit I should be able to just screw this thing down. I'll do each screw just a little bit at a time so it can go in evenly just so all screws can going without it sticking up wonky and just like that everything is back together so we can put the bottom plate back on and turn it back to the center it's actually quite difficult to do there we go the base is now locked in and we should be able to boot this up and from there we can install our operating system. Okay, so now is quite an important part. I've plugged everything into the Mac Mini, and when I turn it on, since there's no operating system on that drive, we'll probably get a image of a question mark on a folder. So we need to reinstall the operating system. There's many ways which that can be done. I'm not going to go through them all today, but the method I'm going to be using is a USB stick which has an installer on it. This USB stick has the installer for macOS 10.15.7 Catalina on it. I made this in the previous video about this computer but there's plenty of documentation online about how to make one of these USB sticks. So I'm going to plug it into the back of this machine and then let's just turn it on and it should come on this monitor. Now we may just get a blinking question mark because it can't read from the internal or it might see that there's a USB drive plugged in and it might boot from that. So let's see 
what exactly happens. So far we've just got a black screen so I guess it's trying to find something to boot from but my guess is it will just come up with a blinking question mark. Oh, we've got an Apple logo. It must have recognized the installer and now it will boot off there and then we can install Mac OS. I've now got a bit of a nicer angle and we can wait for this installer to load. And here we are, we're getting Mac OS recovery coming up. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go into disk utility. That's because the new drive we put in probably won't be recognized. And here it is, it knows that the drive has been put in, which is good, it means that I've not broken it while putting it in. We're going to erase this as Macintosh Extended Journal. That can stay the same, and this is where we can name the drive. I'm going to call this Macintosh SSD, and then we can click on Erase. Now, there's nothing on that drive, so it doesn't matter that I've now just wiped it. There we go, Macintosh SSD is there. We can now go to Install Mac OS, and hopefully we can install it on our new SSD. Let's continue, agree to that, and um, yeah, there we go, that is where I want to install it, and as simple as that, it's going to install. Okay, here we go, there's a grey screen with a cursor, and here we are, welcome, we are in the United Kingdom, that's all fine, Wi-Fi is showing up, I'll try connecting to that. Wi-Fi connected, which means I mustn't have broken the antenna getting it back together. I am going to sign into my Apple ID later. I don't need to do that for now. Terms and conditions, let's just agree to all that. And let's make an account. It's now creating my account. I just called it Mac Mini. Very creative. Express setup, all that will do. Yep, all this is fine. And we are going to go with dark mode. That of course can be changed later. And now it is setting up my Mac. And there we go, we are now in. Okay, so it's now been about a week since I installed the SSD into this Mac Mini and so far it has been running very nicely. It is of course a lot quicker with the SSD in it and also it's not as noisy because there isn't the hard drive spinning. Now one thing I haven't done in the video but I have done is enable trim. Whenever you put an SSD into a Mac device and it's not the SSD that it originally came with it's always important to enable trim so I did this in the terminal by simply typing sudo trim force enable then you enter your password and it restarts and that enables trim so I have indeed done that now there's not really anything else to do in this video this SSD upgrade did work successfully with no problems and the Mac mini is working absolutely fine so hopefully this video was interesting in some way maybe you were able to follow along and do this yourself if so that is great but that will now be the end of this video i've now got a quick mac mini and it's working very nicely so thank you for watching this video i will see you in the next one goodbye